Um, I was always, and this is so honest and so true, I was always scared that my dad would kill himself. So quick heads up, the quality of this video is gonna suck. Uh, but I've been saying that I wanna create more off the cuff, raw, vulnerable, honest videos with you. And I've been putting this video off for a while. So I thought I'm just gonna grab my phone, grab my headphones and record because I wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind over the last few days and a big reason why I haven't been putting the content out that I've wanted to put out. Now let me make one thing clear before I actually discuss this topic. I've got a whole book, probably of you know this thick, of ideas, different content ideas. I've planned them out, different scenes, different ways that I wanna get my story across and my message for this new journey, for these new videos. And I've just been really lacking the time to create them and make them as good as I want them to be. So I wanted to just update you with that at the beginning and say that it's coming. But I wanted to talk to you today about caring for yourself whilst you're caring for others. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this today is because my granddad had a fall on Monday. So if you've seen my videos before, you know my granddad, he's 92, he's extremely independent, he's a really stubborn bastard sometimes because he doesn't like to accept help. Now my granddad, you know, he, he had an only child, which was my dad, and he lost, obviously, my dad in, in the March. My dad died March 2009. His wife, my nan, died April 2009, a month after. So he's gone through, uh, you know, a lot. And he, he's 92 years old, but he's so strong, and he's, he's very mobile, very active, very independent. But he had a fall this weekend, had a fall on Monday, and he's really just been in bed for the last two days. Um, me and Amy, my wife, we brought his bed downstairs. My mum's been round helping. Um, his neighbours have been round helping and he really hasn't got out of bed for the last two days. I've spent the last two days there with him trying to get some work done. Um, you know, my laptop hotspot into my phone because he hasn't got Wi-Fi whilst still giving him the food that he wants and changing him and getting him ready for bed and all of that. So. It's been draining and it's kind of made me inspired to create this video and talk about this, this subject. Now, I have to say, I've had it easy. I'm sure I've had it easy. Some of you may care for someone full time. Some of you may care for people within your job. And my stories that I'm about to share with you may seem very small in comparison to you. So I can only share my personal experience of caring for other people. So what I found with my granddad at the moment as well, and this is the whole point of this video is, that you can easily find yourself getting drained. You can easily find your energy, your stress levels, your energy dropping, your stress levels going through the roof. So it's really important that you focus in on, on yourself and I'm gonna explain how I'm doing that and, and hopefully it's gonna help you in a minute. But quick story. Um, this whole caring attitude that I've always had has been very draining. Now my mum was an alcoholic. I've spoken about this briefly before and she's happy for me to, to discuss it as well. My mum hasn't drunk. She's been dry off alcohol for a few years now, and she was an alcoholic for you know a good 10 years. And I would never say I was caring for my mum because my mum cared for me. Um, she cared for my brother. She was a very full-on mum. She was a functioning alcoholic for a good part of that. Um, but there was a lot of times where you know she'd pass out and I'd maybe help her back into bed, or I would be trying to make her better. I would be you know, giving her maybe some solutions to stop drinking. I would be pouring vodka down the drain in some mornings. And there was a lot of, it's, it's, a lot of it's a blur, but I remember just trying to do as much as I possibly could to care for her and as much as I possibly could to, to make her better, to stop her from drinking. And even when she was in hospital, again, that was very draining. I never knew, if, I didn't know if she was gonna survive um, and so on and so on. And I think caring for someone, especially someone close to you, is very hard. Then going back to my dad, my dad, I never, again, never cared for my dad. My dad cared for me, but when he had his depression, when he had his mental breakdown, and 
like you see, he had a, he had a breakdown and two weeks later, he, he walked in front of a van. He tried to kill himself within two weeks of having this, this depressive breakdown. Um, and he obviously survived the accident. But from then on, six months after that, again, I wouldn't say I was caring for him, but I was trying to make him better. I was trying to understand why he was depressed. I was always on edge. I didn't want to say the wrong things. Um, I was always, and this is so honest and so true, I was always scared that my dad would kill himself for a good period of six months. You know, even when my dad had his first initial accident, even when he was in hospital then, even when he was in the mental health unit, I was working a full-time job at the time, I would clock off at work, drive to the hospital, drive to the mental health unit and spend time with him. And I was younger and I could do that, but it's draining. It really is draining, but you, you, you want to do it. You want to care for these people that are close to you. And then my brother as well now, obviously he had a brain injury, had an accident at work. And for the first month, two months, I, I was by his bedside every single day, hoping that he would get better, hoping that he would wake up, hoping that he would come out of his coma, hoping that he would speak, he would open his eyes, um, hoping that he would swallow, he would eat, he would drink. Um, hoping that he would just remember us. And I then had to pull back and my mum has been by his bedside every single day for the last six months and he's getting, you know, s s he's getting a lot better and he's defied all of the odds. Everything that the doctor said he would not be able to do, he's been able to do, but he's struggling with movement and that's part of his brain injury. And my mum has to now be that carer for him and there's a responsibility for me as well. I feel a responsibility to be a carer for him and help him and at the same time, help my mum. You know, I need to make sure my mum is being supported as well. So that's just my personal stories. And also, you know, being a carer in terms of you being a dad, in terms of you being a husband or a boyfriend or a son, whatever it is, you will always have to care for someone. And there's always going to be a time where you're going to feel like you are number two. But the main lesson that I've learned and what I've really wanted to share with you in this video is that you should always be number one. And that sounds so selfish and it goes against a lot of what people call normal is when you say that I'm caring for someone but I come first. And they will, might call you selfish, it might not seem the right thing to do. There's a lot of guilt attached to that as well. Um, because you might feel guilty that you're focusing on yourself and not focusing on the person that you should be, you're, you're caring for. Um, but you always come first because if you, if you think about it logically, if you're not looking after yourself, how can you look after someone else? If you're not caring for yourself, how can you care for someone else? Because if you're not in the best headspace that you can possibly be, if you're not eating the right um, food, if you're not feeling the best that you can, if you're not sleeping, if you're not looking after yourself, how can you expect to look after someone else? How can you expect to look after your children, be the best dad that you're going to be? How can you expect to look after your elderly parents or someone who's maybe in need of your care? You can't. So you have to really spend time and invest time on yourself. It's when you're flying on an aeroplane, for example, and it always says, make sure you put the gas mask on your, oh, gas mask, not a gas mask, oxygen mask. Gas mask would be a different story. Put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on others. When the plane is maybe crashing, they tell you, you need to put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on your children. Use that as a reference. You need to look after yourself before you think or believe that you can look after someone else. Um, so that's the main thing. The second thing as well is make sure that you ask for support. As men, we do find it hard to say, I need help, I need help. And I found the last couple of days, there's been times where I've asked for help and it really isn't a huge deal. It doesn't make you less of a man. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you not able to care for someone. It's just accepting the support when you need it. Um, so, you know, Amy's been, help, <coughs> Amy's been helping me a lot with my granddad. My mum's been helping me a lot with my granddad. My granddad's got two great neighbours that I can just ring up and they can go in and check on him as well. I've got the doctor around. I've had the doctor around. I've got a care team now coming around as well and all giving him support. So it takes some of that, you know, responsibility away from me. And again, that's not me neglecting him. And there's, again, these emotions that will start to arise that you feel like you're neglecting someone. 
but it's just being okay with support, being okay and asking for help. So this is a kind of rant video, guys. Firstly, I wanted to apologize for the lack of videos. Secondly, I just wanted to hopefully just shoot a video and, and hopefully give you some content and, and help you in some way. And, and thirdly, just give you that advice that before you decide to care for someone else, before you feel like you can offer value to someone else, you need to care for yourself. Because without you caring for yourself, you can't care for anyone else. Hopefully that helps. Um, I'll let you know how everything goes on, obviously, with my granddad. I'm sure he'll bounce back. He always does bounce back. He's a stubborn guy that will never give in. And to be honest with you, my brother's accidents really rocked him. And I think that's a huge part of it. But I'm sure he'll bounce back. I'll let you know how it gets on. But let me know, guys, in the comments below, how do you find yourself caring for others while still looking after yourself? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share this video if you feel like someone could do with it. If you feel like someone could benefit from it, I would truly appreciate it. And I'll see you all in another video very soon.